they could tie it back to the scriptures. You read through the New Testament, they are, they, you, you see where they write, he said, and he, 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 he did this, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. And he did like this. When he did like this, this is that which the prophet of souls. They could see it, that, okay, this thing that is happening today, not this thing that happened yesterday, this thing that is happening today is it. Look at it here. Now, that is somebody that has eyes. It is a Christian. If there was a spirit in Christ that gave him sight to see when the word is made flesh, if that same spirit is in a man who is called a Christian, that man will be able to see also that this is the word being made flesh. Praise God. And now we have come into a church age where almost, see, before, before, uh, now before Christ came in, almost all prophecies were pointing to the coming of Christ. Oh, you just read through the Old Testament. It was pointing there. It was pointing there. And so, when Christ was going to talk about himself, the scripture said, he began at Moses and began to expound unto them things concerning himself. Well, he did not, he, he started in Genesis because everything was pointing there. So, he just needed to, look at where this one said it now. Look at where it happened. He was showing them things. Now, when Christ fulfilled that earthly ministry and returned. Every scripture began to be pointing back, pointing forward now to the uh, coming of the Lord, to the, this end time. So you read almost anything. They say, in the latter times, at the, the spiritual care excellency, in the end time of the end. In this, everything is like pointing down now to his coming again, the end time, and the church in that period. So what we are saying is that so much scriptures talking about this day but the church cannot see that see this thing you, you not hear people talk and say this is that thing that so, pro, so and so prophet said and see something and say this thing look at it here it's prophet said it this thing that is happening look at it now until a person is able to uh, come to that state that person is blind that's not a Christian go to whatever church you like pray however you like first we look at all that last Sunday fast as often as you will, but you, the, the spirit of Christ is not, a, there, there's no life. The, the, the word is quick and powerful. That is, the word is our life. And somebody that is our life can see. But there's no life to see. No sight. No, and we saw that the lamps went out. We saw all that last week. Sunday. Alright, praise God. Now, that is a Christian. And today, by God's grace, we are looking at the, the, the final diagnosis of the Spirit to the, uh, concerning the church. He said, he said, thou art naked. Of course. It just progressed from state to state. First, they said they were rich. And they said they are poor. But the riches is something that blinds people. Uh, it's riches is something that blinds people. So this was it was the deceitfulness of riches. So it just it was just a given that the next day was that they would be blind. They were blinded by the material accusation, blinded by material materialism and all that. Now the, for someone that is blind, it's it's a given too that he'll be naked because he does not even have eyes to see what if he's wearing something or something. But we are going to focus on that today by God's grace, and maybe also. Um, continue with it next week Sunday. Uh, I would like us to read first the book of Samuel. First Samuel. First Samuel um, chapter 15. First Samuel chapter 15. We'll do um, quite a couple of readings. So someone can help me and assist me too so we'll read together. And I'll read some part and some other person will help me. So we'll make it faster. And First Samuel chapter 15. I'd like for us to read verse, just verse 22 first. Then we'll hold that scripture because we're going to go up and read and see how the thing played out to get to verse 22. So, 1 Samuel chapter 15, let's read just verse 22 first. 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. First Samuel 15 verse 1 to 15. Yes. And Samuel said, that the Lord has great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. Praise God. <coughs> Thank you, sir. So, just hold this scripture. Don't close it. We'll still read there again. Um, see, he said, the, 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 the prophet here, by revelation, because the word of God comes to the prophet, he was trying to bring out, now we are looking at nakedness. Because he said the church is naked. Now this is how, uh, by God's grace, this is how the inspiration for the class came to me. So we we'll manage it as we see it. And I pray that the Lord will give us all understanding, including myself. Praise God. Now see, it, 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 it was this, by the Spirit, now he was trying to compare, do some comparison before, to bring out a principle. There's a principle by which God operates. Now he's saying, had God great delight in sacrifices and burnt offerings than in obeying his voice. So, now, 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 he has not said sacrifice and burnt offerings are bad. It's good. Now, then he's not putting out a principle. He said to obey is better than to sacrifice. Now, this is a principle that most times we often downplay. We are looking at nakedness. It's a principle that most times, as Christians, as church, as believers, we downplay it a lot. Because of sacrifice. Now, the Christian life is a life of sacrifice. You sacrifice your money, you sacrifice your time, you sacrifice your... You just sacrifice. You, you pay your tithe. You come to church. You come to all night. You, you, it's a life of sacrifice. You... Dancing too, you will know what singing and dancing is, right? It's sacrifice of praise. Um, um, prayers is sacrifice of, of uh, burnt incense. These are all sacrifices. You pray, you can fast 21 days, 15 days, 30 days, one month, 60 days. Well, it is sacrifice. I, I, I keep myself. I don't, I, don't, I don't steal. It's a sacrifice you are making because of something. But you see, there's something that inside all these sacrifices. Now, don't forget too, it is God that ordained the sacrifices. You read through the book of Numbers, Exodus, Leviticus. You see how he put all the sacrifices in place. He's the one that ordained, instituted them. But there's something that is, uh, that is on top. There's something that's above sacrifices. It is obedience to his will. It, is, it stands above sacrifice. So, as Christians, see the things we usually pride ourselves in. We are able to pray. We are able to come together and sing and have some great hours of worship session. It is a sacrifice of praise. But there is something that is above that. Obedience to his voice. To obey is better <laughs> than to sacrifice. I can pray. You see, some people, praying machine. They can stay like this and vibrate and pray and pray and pray. It is not saying that sacrifice is bad. He instituted it. But there's something that is higher than that thing you are doing. Some people can stay and, and take their time out to intercede. See, the scripture said, the, the fervent, effectual prayer of the righteous availeth much. And so, it just takes you to be a righteous person. For your prayers to work, it takes right. It doesn't take salvation. Okay. See, it does not take salvation. It just takes you to be able to attain to right some form of righteousness, some form of righteousness. That's to be a just person. You you you, you live a just life. Yeah, and what's what's that man's name? Colenus, right? He said he was a just man. He said, and one that feared God. And he, he hated evil and all. And he always he was always praying and fasting and all that. He was not yet saved though. But what did the angel tell him? <laughs> he gave a lot of alms. And did others, giving alms is part of sacrifice too. He gave alms greatly. And, and came, the angel came down and said, your alms giving and your prayers. He said, they have broken through and stood for, as a memorial before God. He was not saved. So he said the prayer of a righteous person availeth much. So people 
are in that ministry, they can pray. And the prayers will work. But all these things come under sacrifices. But there's something that is on top of it. To obey. Okay. Then again, he said, and to, now the obedience is obedience to his will. To, look at it. Push it forward. Now again, he said, and to hekin than the fat of rams. You see, if you look at uh, the, the animal husband, if you look at uh, sheep, goats, ram, cow, and all that thing, you see what makes it, you look at it, and it's looking robust. It's the fat that is inside. So, if, if they just remove all the fat, and you're just looking at only this flesh, and the, it will be looking lean and malnourished and something. But as it's eating, it develops fat, so it's looking robust. So, when, actually, when, when there's no food, Giving to it, what happens? The system begins to convert the fat to energy, it burns the fat first. That's why if you see somebody that has not eaten, the person will first depreciate. It goes, it goes slim down. You say, ah, Why is they like this? The fat don't they go. So the fat is that thing that makes it look beautiful. But he said to hacking is better than the fat of rams. Those things that a Christian surrounds himself with that makes the Christian life. He said, This, this people, people are saying this is beautiful. Ah, the church is beautiful. I see the auditorium. I see the this. Yes, it's good. But there's something that's on top of it to hacking. To hacking means to hacking means the ability to hear. The ability to hear. Please. So, Matthew 13. Matthew 13. The ability to hear and to follow through with what you have heard. You are able to hear. So to hacking is not this one. It's not the physical hearing. See, it's not the physical hearing. So when he said to hacking, the ability to be able to hear what the spirit is saying and then follow through with it. That is what it means by to hacking. And he said it is better than the fat of rams. Praise God. Now, Matthew 13, um, verse 13 to 16. Matthew 13, verse 13 to 16. Somebody please help us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Matthew 13 from verse 13 to 16. Yes. The same day when Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside, and great multitudes were gathered together unto him. So that he Matthew 13, verse 13. Verse 13. <laughs> Speak in them in parables. Because they sing. Not. Okay, sir. Thank you. Let me take it. Therefore, speak I to them in parables, see? Because seeing, they see not. We dwelt on that last week. We were talking of blindness. Now, see, we are on the second step. Um, and, and hearing, they hear not. So, they can hear, but they cannot hear. So, by the physical organ, the ear, they can hear. But by the spiritual organ, they cannot hear. That's, they cannot hack in. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, and neither do they understand. Okay. In them is to feel the prophecy of Isaiah, which said, By hearing, you shall hear and shall not understand. And seeing, you shall see and not perceive. So we said, the ability to be able to, you have heard where he said, you have heard where he said, um, uh, 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 Revelation chapter 13, now the Lord Jesus Christ was telling us that a beast shall rise up out of the sea. We have heard it. Do they understand? Yeah, look at, last Sunday we said, do they perceive? That is, see the thing, the thing. He said the beast, look at the thing is happening. But do they perceive that this is that beast that was spoken of? Now, by hearing, they shall hear and shall not understand. Okay. Now, verse 15, it says, For these people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing. And their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Verse 16, and But blessed are your eyes for they see, and your ears for they hear. Now, there's a group of people that their ears hear. 
there's a group of people that their ears don't hear. They don't have the ability. It's not to sit down in church and he, hear when it, that is, they don't have the ability to hear what the Spirit is saying, to understand that, okay, 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 this is that thing that the Spirit said. Okay, he said, he said, follow me. I will show you a woman, a city that is set upon a beast. I will show you the judgment of that woman. Follow me and I will show you. He said, and I went with him and he, I saw a woman set upon a scarlet color beast. Okay, now we have heard. Oh, yeah, now, wait and be. Now, can they understand that this thing, this is what it is talking about. Okay, he said, there shall be seven kings. This is going to be the disposition of them. But there's going to be an eighth one. This is how we will look. This is what we have heard. Do they understand? Praise God. This is a principle that runs. Giving offerings, tithes, prayers, sacrifices of all the best sort we can, the fat of them, is good. But there's something that is better than that. The ability to hack in. The church has lost the ability to hack in. Because hearing, they do not hear. Praise God. Okay, so how do you... How, uh, uh, now, you understand why Mark 7-7 seven, seven presented it the way it presented itself. He said, he said um, uh, in vain do they worship me. <laughs> because they teach your doctrine. The commandment worship is what the sacrifice we are saying last Sunday. A group of people can gather and be inside sweating and crying, tears and rolling, but it can be in vain. So man can look and say, Wow, the service was explosive. But God can look from heaven and say, This was in vain. Why? Yes, cannot hear. Okay, you understand what happened what was happening in Matthew 7 21 and 22. When they presented their sacrifices, he said, Have we not, have we not um, prophesied in your name? Have we, not, um, have we not done great and mighty works in your name? Have we not done this, 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 cast out devils in your name? Do you want to know the sacrifices that went into those things? They paid dearly for those abilities. For the, I will know now people that you, you go to the mountain, see people that have been fasting in the mountain for power to cast out devils. It's, it's, it's easy to cast out devil. Look for one and cast out. They put a lot of sacrifice to get to that height spiritually. When they're able to drive this, is but they presented their sacrifices to, and he, he, he canceled it. He canceled it. Why? They were able to operate upon sacrifices, live godly Christian good lives, but did not have the ability to hack him. Because he said, it is not they that say, Lord, Lord, but he that do the will of my father. To do, first you must hear the will of the Father. But people don't have ability to have spiritual discernment. Spiritual discernment, this is what the Lord is expecting from the church today. Praise God. Okay, now let's continue that reading we read before. Samuel. Let's bring out something. We're in first Samuel. Samuel, we'll, we'll see an example of this, this thing here, yeah, this the ability to hack in and see sacrifices. Samuel, King Saul did certain things. Two things, actually. Two things. Um, first Samuel 13, 8 to 4. Then now we'll still read the first Samuel 15 we read and go from 12 to 23. I'll read that one. Someone should help me with um, first Samuel 13, 8 to 14. 13, 8 to 14. Yes. And he tarried seven days. Now, and Samuel. is Samuel. You can go and read this entire story. But Samuel tarried seven days. seven days. According to the set time that Samuel has appointed. According to the set time that Samuel has appointed. Samuel and and, and may, may I add here that there's a set time that the Lord Jesus Christ had appointed. Right? There's a set time for his coming. He put it seven days. Seven Gentile de- generations. Seven, seven church ages. It was appointed. But now there's like a bit of a tarrying. Samuel tarried set uh, started seven days according to the set time. Please continue, sir. That Samuel had appointed. For Samuel came not to Gideon, and the people were scattered from him. And Saul said, Bring it up, a burnt offering to me, and peace offering. And he offered the burnt offering. And it came to pass that as soon as he had made an end of the offering, 
the burnt offering. Behold, Samuel came and Saul went out to meet him that he might salute him. And Samuel said, What hast thou done? And Saul said, Before I saw that the people were scattered from me, and that thou camest not within the day appointed, and that the Philistines gathered themselves together at midnight, therefore shall I. Therefore said I. Therefore said I, the Philistines will come down now upon me to Gideon, and I have not made supplication unto the Lord. I trust myself therefore, and offer a bond offering. And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he, uh, which he commanded thee. For now will the Lord have established thy kingdom upon his head forever. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought him a man after his own heart. Praise God. Uh, okay. An interesting read. See, Samuel, thank you, sir. Samuel was a king. Uh, no, Saul was a king in Israel. Ordained according to the, um, yeah, the, the people brought him out. And then the Lord said, pour oil on his head. Ordained him. You read the story of Saul. He prophesied until they were saying, Saul among the prophets. He prophesied too. He did all those many, many things. But he was a king. Now he has entered into his office of rulership, kingship. But now there's also another office. It is the office of the priest. Now see, please, let's take note of these things. Small thing like this. Because people do not have the ability to hack in. To hack in means to understand. That's to understand what the spirit wants. See, People don't have that thing. It, it, cost, it, it is very costly. Now Samuel was, Saul was a king. And see, before they go out to battle, they, are set, they, 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 they usually offer sacrifices. And then he has received instruction. He has received instructions. He says, Tari, I will come. I will offer the sacrifice. Then Israel will go out to war. But Samuel tarried certain days. Now because of the delay, now he saw that the Philistines had drawn nigh. But they have not given sacrifice and Israel needs to go to battle. So what did he say? He said, bring peace offering, bring bond offering and I will offer sacrifice. Is it a bad thing to offer sacrifice? The sacrifice that he offered is not according to instruction. But now Saul was a king. Not a priest. He was a king. He stepped out of his office into another man's office. That thing alone was enough for God to rent the kingdom from him. Christians, we are Christians, but we have our offices. You are a pastor, you are a prophet, you are a seer, you are a singer, you are a player of instruments. See, if you step out of your office, that thing can make God rent that thing from your hand. Because we are kings. The scripture says he has made us priests and kings. The, the scripture said he has given unto every man a grace that they will minister severally according to the grace that is given unto them. You are a dreamer of dreams. But then you decided to now enter prophets or enter word of knowledge because the two kind of deal with vision. They come aside and come and because you see another prophet is doing. Then you now, you want to switch it is enough for them to rent the kingdom because there's a kingdom that is given to us. Now, just maintaining the voice of God, each man to his lot, each man to his office, each man to his ordination, and stand in that thing, just to stay there can make the Lord to establish the kingdom that we will rule with him forever. But to step outside from that thing, forward, you see, now see, Samuel, Saul, Saul had a beautiful reason here. Philistines don't come now. And me, I know how to offer sacrifice. <laughs> and me, I know how to offer sacrifice. Must it be, actually, I'm here now. Philistines don't come. Battle don't set. They don't draw swords. Israel has no offer sacrifice. 
Then Israel needs to fight. Then before Israel goes to battle, Israel not, must offer sacrifice. Because Israel is a nation of priests. They must offer sacrifice. So, so what is wrong now if I, woman pastor, you will not stay in your own place. Ah, ah, ah. What is wrong now if, if we preach and so that people will be saved? Uh, no man now, so the men are refusing the ministry. So, so what happened if as a woman I come up and be a pastor and preach for people to hear? No problem. For that cause, God can rent something away. Why? He says Samuel went out to meet him to salute him when he was coming. He was happy. <laughs> Let me go and greet the prophet. Hey, as in, we, are, we, are, we, are, we have done everything. And he said, what have, that, what, what, what have you done? He said, <laughs> I have a sacrifice now. As, as there was no priest around. <laughs> and I can offer. He said, well, now when I become a priest, offer small, then return back to a king. And he said, see, you have not obeyed the commandment of the Lord. He said, for this cause, the kingdom shall be rent from thee and shall be given to another person. Be given to another person. A man after God's heart. Now, see the other person I was giving to. It was given to David. Look at David. David, too, was a man. He had faults. Like we all have like passions and faults and things. See? Like Saul, too. Saul had his own wala. He had his own faults. He went to go and marry a woman that doesn't have sense. Come from Edba, married a witch. Brought her into Israel. Brought her out. She came with her gods and everything. And then went up and admired the land of Naboth. Killed him. Took the land and everything, you see. Did David do the same, something like that? Uh, David did something like that. He admired um, his neighbor's wife. And he took her and killed him. See, he did about the same thing. But there's a difference between these two men. The difference is that, the difference is that one is a man after God's heart. See, it's somebody that had the ability to hack him. To look at the wheel. Now, see, David had an a, a burning desire. What? Let's bring the ark of God back to its place. The ark of God should be set here. We all might have a burning desire. Let's preach. Let's convert. Let's do this. Yes, but the sacrifices had to stay according to their order. He had a burning desire. Let's bring this, let's bring this ark back to its place. Back to the temple. We have been established that the ark of God is not with us. And Saul, they did not inquire, inquire at the ark in the days of Saul. See, it's a man that was not even able to inquire at the ark. This is our ark. This is our ark. The ability to be able to inquire here. Inquire here. That is inquiring at the ark. This, they, they, they couldn't inquire at the ark. So he said, let's bring this, let's bring this home. They didn't, they didn't inquire at the ark in the days of Saul. A beautiful thought. But then in executing it, he, he created, he made a very beautiful Beautiful system, beautiful cart, beautiful vehicle to mobilize. Ah, the ark of God is. Ah, ah, we don't pass. We, we see. We are no more archaic like when we were in the old. We were coming in the what do they call that? In the wilderness, we didn't have a place. We didn't have uh, tools. We don't have work tools. So we're carrying. We we're not archaic. Let's 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 make this thing. Let's make it final. We have passed those days, and then they made a fine ark. A, a fine cat, a vehicle, put the ark on it, and we're driving. What was happening in that driving? Cutting, if you go and read that thing, they gathered rams, goats, cows. At, when they drive to a point, they offer like 1,000 1, goats. Sacrifices, palm, dancing, singing. But there's something that God is more interested in. It is better to obey than kill 1,000 rams here. Now, when, when, when God made a breach amongst them, he made a breach amongst them, then David, see what a man after his heart said. David, uh, no, something is wrong, something is wrong. Then he went back to inquire at the word. He opened the thing. Right? Then he gathered the people again. He said, see, the first time, we did not do it according to the due order. Where did he see the due order? Back here. So, now, see, we are going to return back, but this time, the Lord has said that the priests and the priests alone must bear his ark on their shoulder. 
times does not change God. Wilderness or no wilderness, it must be like that. How are telling us that, oh, you cannot read, you cannot continue with the scripture. We, are, we, are, we have reached modern times. So you cannot continue with it. When you were saying, let the woman not preach, let the woman, God does not change. You're not being with a talk every day. So what's happening? Why is somebody changing the testament? Because times are changing. Praise God. That was the first thing. So the, the second thing, um, First Samuel 15, I said. Yeah, first Samuel 15. Now see. <coughs> the Lord sent uh, Saul. The Lord sent Saul. He was still giving him another chance. He sent Saul out. <coughs> go to go to the land of the Amorites. And, and uh, uh, Amalekites, thank you. And completely extinguish anything. A anything. Fowl, goat, anything you see. Wipe out completely. Make an utter end. <laughs> May the Lord make an utter end of all that fight against us. Because the judgment of the Lord is, <laughs> is thorough. It's utter. He does this complete. So, uh, he, the, uh, Malachi, Malachi said, He shall leave them neither root nor branch. So the root that you used to grow again, He will remove it. Praise God. Now see. But Saul went and did certain things. Now then, the Lord came and said certain things to Samuel, and Samuel has come to Saul. Verse 13. And Samuel came to Saul and said, and Saul said unto him, see, Blessed be thou of the Lord, for I have performed the commandment of the Lord. This is what I say now. Blessed be thou, I have performed the commandment of the Lord. <coughs> and Samuel said, What minute then this beating of sheep in my ears, and the lowing of oxen which I hear. And Saul said, Ah, they have brought them from uh, the Amalekites. For the people spare the best of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God. And the rest we have utterly destroyed. Then Samuel said unto Saul, Stay, I will tell thee. What the Lord has said to me this night. And he said, Say on. And Samuel said, When thou was little in thine own sight, thou was not made the head of the tribes, was thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel? And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel. He said, The Lord has sent thee on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore, then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst fly upon the spoil and did evil in the sight of the Lord. Are you seeing what God refers to as evil? And Saul said to Samuel, Yeah, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and I have gone the way which the Lord sent me, and I have brought Agag, the king of Amalek, and I have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took the spoil of oxen and the and, 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 and sheep and oxen and the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed. They brought it so that they would destroy it in sacrifice unto God. So that they would sacrifice it to God. They brought it here to make sacrifice unto God. See. And and Samuel said, Had the Lord, that's where it came in. Had the Lord great as great as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as is treated is treated before God. Is treated as the sin of witchcraft. If you look at Saul now and say you are a witch, he can swear and tell you, but I have never thrown, so I, I know they fly for night. I, I never throw something. But God is looking down and says, this man is a witch. And, 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 and stubbornness as iniquity and idolatry. Just stubbornness. God looks at, in the book of Revelation, when he's, uh, um, uh, Corinthians, where he said, 
idolater shall not enter in. He stop bomb people. He shows some of the Bible. This is what God has said. You know the standard of God, but you want to do your own. You are, a, you are an idolater. That when God looks down from heaven, you are worshiping Ogun. That's, you, are, you, are, you have arranged stones and gods in your backyard and you are, you, are, you are bowing down. But if he comes now and says, you are an idol worshiper, you say, ah, me when be pastor. Uh, me when they preach for church. Me when be Christian. And every day I sing for choir. You, you are a Ogun worshiper. See it here. Praise God. But he's an Israelite. He simply brought things to sacrifice to God. Now he said, Now, because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, <laughs> thou hast also been rejected from being king in Israel. So, <laughs> whenever I reach half of where we go, <laughs> we just start. <laughs> For rejecting God's word, a lot of people will be rejected from their offices as kings. We are Christians. Revelation says he has made us priests and kings unto God by his blood. Now, because of people's rejecting the word, you show a person, this is what the word has said now. If the person believes, you can play it down. Now, you see, 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 see what the man said. He said, I have kept the commandment of the Lord. He said, he gave us a command and said, baptize. Go out and meet a Christian today. And the person will rush out to meet you. Yeah, I have kept the commandment of the Lord. How did you keep it? He said, I, I, I went to the waters and they dipped me inside three times. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God, I have kept the commandment of the Lord. You can, how did you keep it? Ah, they sprinkled water in my head when I was still an infant. It can't leak. <laughs> When I was there, in fact, they gathered me and they sprinkled water on my head. And I have kept the commandment of the Lord. I have been baptized. They sprinkled water for baptism. They even gave me Godfather and Godmother. They stood behind my back when they were pouring something on my head. They gave me a name. I have kept the commandment of the Lord. Woman, where are you coming from? From keeping the commandment of the Lord. He said, I, I should go and preach. Uh, he sent me to be a pastor, to open ministry, to be a GO, to be an overseer. Which he, when, when he called my husband, he called me too. <laughs> okay. Okay, so now the spirit speaking in in the spirit speaking in this church age is saying something. They are naked. Now I want to bring up something quickly. We will just read it here. Now, in the, the ministry of the prophets, in 19, 1933, in 1933, he was given seven visions. Seven visions. I've shown how they were to play out. How they were to, according to the order of fulfillment. And said, now this was even before he, he began really to operate in the ministry. He was still a Baptist. He was still a Baptist then. He was given seven visions. He was shown seven visions. Now, this, this was, these were no dreams. He was making ready to go into a service. And, and he was making ready to go into the service. And as he was there, the thing, his, his eye, it just broke open before his eyes. And the Lord said, I will show you. The things, you know, he said, the, the, the coming of the Lord is now nigh. That I will show you seven major things that will happen before the system winds up completely. And he began to show it to him in order. Now, many of us may have heard of the sixth one because the sixth one was what Oyahilome was 
was playing on tape. He played the tape in his. He was trying to get the people to understand that there's a prophet that prophesied something concerning what was the woman's name? The Biden administration. Uh, concerning uh, the vice president of America now, the sitting president, I was trying to say Amara, Amala. Wow. Okay. So he was trying to say, he was trying to bring it back and say that this man was a prophet of God and see the prophecy he gave concerning concerning America. And he said, if that thing, and we see that thing, it's one of the signs to know that we are very close. One of the signs to know that we are very close. And uh, Yahilome was playing it. He played it before his church and all that, where the prophet was prophesying about it. Now, but I'm bringing this up in, in, because it, it, there's a relationship with this nakedness that we are looking at, looking at now. And now, when he prophesied, it was not only that one that he prophesied. <laughs> because the man took only that one. <laughs> The man went to the thing one talk. He didn't take only that one. <laughs> he had rejected the man from being a prophet. Leave his things alone. Go <laughs> face your own. So it's not only that one. There were a string of seven visions, which, were, which, according to how it played out, it was successive in nature. So I want to just read. You can look for it on the net. Yeah, on the net. But I will just read from the fourth one to the seventh or sixth or so. Okay, now, it said, on Sunday morning of June 1933, but Abraham was given a series of seven visions that will happen before the coming of the Lord, and we have all heard him speak about these visions. Okay, now, there's the first one, the second one, the third one. Now, the fourth vision. This is 1933. 1933. The, the fourth vision showed, he said, great advances in science that will come after the Second World War. It was headed up, you know, the first, the first ones, first, second, and third, talked about the coming of a war and all that stuff. So that's what he's referring to here. See, after that war, the, 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 there was going to be great advances in science. He said, and he was watching the advancement play out in the vision. The world was getting more advanced, more advanced, more advanced. Until he saw people were in something like an egg. The, the, the thing had an egg shape. People were sitting inside. The car did not have steering. But it was driving itself. And then the people inside were playing uh, something that looked like a game that looked like check or something. Yeah. He said they were playing a game. He said, just relaxed inside. He said the car did not have steering. The team was just driving. People inside were playing like check. They just stay inside the play. The car was driving on its own. He said, and the team looked like an. They don't cough, cough. He said he was watching the team take shape, take shape until the team completely coughed like egg. He said that's how he saw that vision, and he said there was going to be a great increase in technology and science. It don't happen. Who was seeing it was in 1933. When they were still using, if you go and look at car that, <laughs> if you go and look at 1933 car, <laughs> okay, those car won't be like uh, chariot. He, he, he still he car did like chariot. He still <laughs> what resembles chariot. That's what they were still reading. That's when he was seeing this vision. So, okay, now after that, he said, he said his the fifth vision was this. He said it had to do with the moral problem of the age. He said, centering mostly around women. He said, God showed him that women began to step out of that place, beginning with the granting of votes. That is, this, as at this time, women were not yet allowed to vote in America. They were, they were not allowed to vote. They, they, they do political election. Women not they come out, come vote. He said, but the first thing that what he saw is that it will begin with them granting the woman the right to vote. He said that the next thing was that the woman began to wear clothes that belonged to men. Then, then the woman began to have rights, either equal rights or higher rights than men. 
We are still in 1933 seeing this. Then he said, uh, she then, the last picture, the, because the thing, he said it, it was progressing. The last picture he saw of that vision, of that particular frame, he said, he saw the woman's dressing getting smaller, 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 until the last picture he saw was a naked woman. He said, except for the, there's, there's something like a, a leaf that she used to cover here, just leaf here. Then the, the thing that she wore here is like that. I, I don't know if you have seen all those uh, 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 places like Africa, some, some, some kind of African, this thing, where it'd be like, it'd be like a rope. And uh, when they go, uh, they, 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 the thing, the, the, the thing. If you see them, they, 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 know they, they don't wear anything. No, they just be like, say they wear leaves. And uh, he said that was the last picture he saw of the woman. You see, and then that vision, that particular set, passed. I said I'm bringing it up because it has to do. Now, a lot of I've seen a lot of us have visions and things. Uh, I've listened on WhatsApp and messages being sent around. The Lord showed me. The Lord showed me. So I cannot argue what the Lord showed you. But there's something that we always do. If the Lord has showed you, if the Lord has spoken to you at all, you want to know if it's God, take it to the Word. Take it here. If you cannot find, if you cannot locate it here, I'm telling you, you are deluded. That is, you are going straight. You, you have become a witch. I'm telling you. But you might not know. And now, see, there's something with the spirit. There's something with this spirit. The spirit of delusion. The spirit of divination. These other many, many spirits. They might minister. And what they are ministering to you is correct. But the problem is not the correct. The problem is that you are using another spirit to minister. Paul went to preach in that. And that, that lady with the spirit of divination came out and said, Ha! Everybody, see, yes, yeah, see, these are men, servants of the Most High God, that have come to show us the way of life. Right? He cry, follow Paul the first day. Cry, follow Paul the second day. He, as they cry, follow Paul, you know, he said, and he said he drove out the spirit of divination from the person. What's the problem? Uh, Why didn't they talk correct now? He's correct. This is, this is a servant of God that came to show the people the way of the most high. Are you correct? But what was happening? The problem was that this is not the spirit of God. So sometimes you might hear something that is even correct, but you don't know you are using this. Another spirit is talking, no. Okay, I'm pastor. I was trying to teach us and uh, to continue this one on identifying obedience to the spirit and how to identify the voice of God and all that. Now, one of the greatest things, you bring it back here. I dreamt a dream. Good, bring it here. I saw a head vision. Good, bring it here. I heard a voice. Good, bring it here. So, now, this vision that the prophet saw, if you put it here, it's according to the word of God. Because the word has said in the diagnosis of the last age that thou art naked. So, he saw, he saw the thing was progressing. Until now, this was the woman, she's a woman now. Until she was completely naked. So, I, I, I said, well, This class we wanted to break it into two talk about the church and also talk about the woman as uh, she dresses. Now, that was the fifth. Now, the sixth was that he said, I saw in America they rose up a most beautiful but cruel woman and she held the people in complete power and she was a, in a great position, something like a president. A vice president or something that a very great woman rose up and she was dressed in purple. And that's what the that's now that's what the one Oyakilme was talking about that. But Oyakilme skipped the part that he said they'll be naked. See church people, see, see, see. He lived that one. He, he joined the one now when the prophet talked. So that was the that was the fifth, that was the sixth vision. Yeah, uh, he saw that woman rise up. Now I'm, I'm just reading this last two. To show you where we are at. When we say this word, we soon wind up. Now, after that vision, the last vision, he said, he said he had a, a great explosion. 
He said he turned to look behind him. He said he saw a complete waste, vast land. He could just see debris and smoke and burnings and smithereens over the land of America. No one, so it was completely obliterated. He said this was the last vision and he was brought back from the king and he wrote them down. That was the last vision. So I want you to see where we are at. We are right now standing at the sixth vision. <laughs> Go, this thing goes to finish. This world goes to end. If you take that last vision to the Bible, it is there. Because the Bible said America will be destroyed. Now, you see, we're not, we're, <laughs> I'm not a prophet. I'll come and tell, uh, say, as I stand now, I've seen your, your three or your four, or your sixth generation. And the, <laughs> I know, sorry. But see, I can tell you now, eh? I can tell you now, thus said the Lord, Vatican City will be destroyed. I, I can tell you that one now because this is, yes, I'm standing upon the word now. I can see it here. Vatican City, it will go down. It will be destroyed. America will be blown out. Rome will be destroyed. It is thus said the Lord. I don't need to go and sleep. And if I sleep and I see something that looks like America will not be destroyed, then I know that something is wrong with what I saw. Praise God. And let me just round off with the second, the second vision. Now, this second one he saw in um, July 3rd, 1964. He was looking at something that now he said I remember that night, July 3rd, 1964, over here sitting in the shopping center right in front of us here. I've been in Pig Alley in France and I've been in New York and Los Angeles. But the filthiest bunch of women I have ever seen in my life is in Jeffersonville, Indiana. That's his own hometown. I never seen so much gum and filth uh, in my life. Now, he said, I sat, I sat there till my heart ached, but the Lord had given me a vision, and I seen the preview, the preview of the bride. I stood there, and I seen a beautiful lady, just correctly dressed and things, marching this way, and, and there was somebody standing by me, there was somebody standing by me in that vision. I didn't see the person. And the face, he said, but uh, 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 it was just a voice. And the voice said, the preview of the bride. He said, and I seen her go by. But each one of them looked like they were dressed differently. Because they are from different countries, different cities, different towns. You see. But they are all in the bride. So he said, but, uh, uh, but they all had long hair. They wore longer sleeves and skirts and uh, so forth. Young women looked Kind of like I would say maybe twenties, and she was they, they were beautiful. Looked at her and come on this side and went around and she passed by. And he said, "That's the bride. Now we will review the churches." Now, he said, "But he said now I have my Bible open here before me. See, I can only say what I have seen. I'm looking at the Bible. And I'm telling the truth." Then he turned me to the right side, and he showed me each church as they've come up out of the ages. The last one was this last day church age, which was led by a witch. <laughs> and, and they were so immorally dressed, so filthy looking, and they were marching on to the team of twist and rock and roll. And the women were throwing themselves in a twist, you know? That woman used to twist a uh hand, -huh, twisting like that. If you watch uh, music videos and see how women dance these days, uh -huh. they train themselves in a twist and, and, and with just holding a gray paper. They were holding a gray paper. Gray is between black, white, and black, which is a deceiving color. It's neither white nor black, it's a deceiving color. A gray looking paper holding in front of them like this. And that, that's, they just held a gray looking paper in front of their chest like this. He said, but they were completely naked. It's only that paper that was preventing you from seeing 
their breasts. Like, it was naked, and they were just coming and dancing like that. And the skirts, like all those skirts that they cut into in pieces. He said, and 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 they were marching and twisting and carrying up without music. And he said, that is the church. Now, I heard it coming up on this side. Then they come the Asian church, the European church, on down and Miss America, all of them. They were walking all the same way, naked, twisting to music and all those worldly kind of songs. It only passed. And when it passed by me, my heart fainted. I thought, if that's what we are trying to present to Christ as a bride. Ah, <laughs> he said, he said, he said, God, he said, just take me. Take my life. If this is what we are, we are, we are, make, we are preparing for Christ, he said, then what am I doing here as a preacher? I should just die already and go to hell. See. Okay, so then he said, let me die. Let me fade away. Then he said, and as soon as it went out, and now every time any one of the church will come, it will go, get to a certain place and drop off. It will get to a certain place like a cliff and then drop down. It will drop off. He said then, uh, as he was just thinking, uh, his heart broken like that, he said then he heard something like a, a song, like onward Christian soldiers. He said, and he looked. He said, and here come that scented bunch of little girls, like the first one he saw. He said, here she came again. He said, and, and she was having, just like that first one, correctly dressed, having her hair hanging down, not bobbed and all that. He said, smooth, clean, marching like this to the step of the gospel song that was playing. He said, and she was the word. And it looked like one out of every nation. In that it looked like there was one out of every nation in them. He said, and I was looking at it, and I seen them pass by. And, and instead of going down like the rest, they started going up. He said, and I noticed two or three of them getting out of line. He said, and I screamed, stay in line. He said, and then the vision left him. And when the vision left him, he was standing in his room and saying, stay in line in his room. It was not like he was standing in his room. Stay in line. Yes. Okay. He's back to reality. He screamed. That's how the vision left him. Now, this is a preview of the church. Is it the same thing that the spirit said? The spirit and the bride, they are saying one thing. I've not touched the subject of nakedness on the church. We will continue from here next week. Like that's great. <laughs> So we'll be seeing, looking in depth into the nakedness. When the Spirit said, diagnose the church and said, that you are naked. We'll be looking at it. We have looked at blindness, poor, poverty, and riches. And we'll be looking at the nakedness of the church. Then also I said I wanted to bring in dressing too. The, the, the teachers and preachers that say to our ladies that it doesn't matter how you are dressed and whatever Christianity is in the heart and things. We'll look at everything. It's just so interesting to see and to know that God does not change. And these things are put down here. But if only, if only we can heck him, heck him, heck him. If you have gotten a God-given position, see? Now, I, 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 I wrote this. I, I, the, the, the inspiration here came on, on Friday, on Friday morning, before we came in for the online service. And I was wondering why it was, because we were supposed to talk on nakedness, but it was bringing... The, the inspiration was coming through hacking. Um, it, obedience is better than sacrifice and to hacking than the fat of ram. So at the end, I began to understand, okay, this is why the Lord... Now, the thing, the inspiration came to the end. The, the, the sermon here, the teaching here is prepared to the end. The nakedness of the church and all that is prepared to the end. But we, we've never even got into that part. Where the thing stopped, that there we stop. So, see, praise God. But see, let's try as much as possible to hack him. Uh, now, whatsoever uh, department we are operating, whatsoever thing we are doing, as sacrifices before God, Christians, Christians, like I said, we live life of sacrifice. But all that thing can be squeezed and thrown down to, to the flames of fire. 
if we don't have the ability to hack in now like i said to hack in means to be able to understand as you said it this this is what the spirit is saying and then to do to follow through this is what it is now there are other voices pastor was using that last week sunday there are other voices he said but my sheep know my voice he said and a stranger voice they will not follow they will not hack into a, a contrary voice whatsoever thing has been committed to us as christians as whatsoever we are doing in church or, or the, let us learn to hack in pray for the grace to hack in you can serve god in whatsoever capacity and be mightily used and ha- do a lot of sacrifices and yet the kingdom will be ripped out of your hand remember that god does not change blessed be the name of the lord thanks giving and offering uh, and with it, testimonies please put your name down and give it to one of our coordinators and then if you have questions comments contributions we can hear you for just about five minutes or so questions if you have questions on what i've said so far comments and contributions let's hear just about five minutes all right so then blessed be the name of the lord we'll continue from here next week by god's grace in jesus christ Thank you.